In 1858, the Blessed Virgin Mary appeared to a young peasant girl named Bernadette Subaru in a grotto in Lourdes, France. She appeared to Bernadette 18 times. On the third apparition, Our Lady told her, I do not promise you happiness in this life, but in the next. During these apparitions, Bernadette would get on her knees, scrape the ground three times, drink the bunny water, as well as spitting it out, kiss the ground and smear mud on her face, all to the horror of onlookers. The grotto was a place where, at the time, pigs would take shelter. Though Bernadette looked mad, she was in fact acting out our Lord's passion. These actions also revealed a spring. During the ninth apparition, the lady said to Bernadette, go to the spring, drink of it, and wash yourself there. Bernadette was asked what the lady wanted, and she said, penance, 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 and pray for sinners. During the 13th apparition, Mary said to Bernadette to tell the priests that they and the people should come here in procession and build a chapel. And on the 25th of March, 1858, the day of the 16th apparition, Bernadette asked the lady her name, and she replied, I am the Immaculate Conception. Bernadette was ridiculed and ostracized by her community, the religious, her family, and even imprisoned by the local authorities during these apparitions. Yet, after a four-year investigation, the Catholic Church proclaimed the apparitions at Lourdes in 1858 as valid and pronounced this site a place worthy of pilgrimage. Why? Because the miraculous healings that have occurred to those who have bathed in or drank the water of Lourdes. Claims of cures were so numerous that various medical boards have been set up to verify these claims. Since the beginning of the phenomenon, almost 8,000 cures have been examined by the Lord's Medical Bureau. In 1859, Professor Henry Vargas of the Faculty of Medicine in Montpellier was appointed to examine the cures, and seven cures were recorded before 1862. From 1890 to 1915, the Bureau was led by physician Dr. Bossier, and his assistant, Dr. Cox. The Medical Bureau is said to have improved its methods and gained a reputation for excellence, but it faced a daunting task. 150 pilgrimages a year with 150,000 pilgrims each year, 120 to 430 visiting physicians and cures galore, approximately 140 a year, peaking at 200 a year in 1897, 1898, 1899, and 1904. In 1905, Pope Pius X decreed that claims of miraculous cures at Lourdes should submit to a proper process and be rigorously investigated. At his instigation, the Lourdes Medical Bureau was formed and headed by the Bishop of Tarbes. Baron Dr. George Fernard Dunton of St. Malcure was named the first director. The standards he established for the judgment of healing miracles became known as the Libertini Criteria and are still in use today in the medical examinations at Lourdes and the Vatican. They are. The illness must be serious and not liable to go away by human means. The cure must be instantaneous, that is, the illness cannot progressively get better over a course of years. The cure must be complete, in the case of blindness, for example, both eyes must regain sight. The cure must be lasting more than 10 years in most diseases. There can be no other disease or crisis that could have precipitated the cure, and there can be no medical treatment that relates to the cure. Cases where treatment has failed or has not yet been administered are the cases most likely to be considered by the International Lords Medical Commission. If the cure stands up to this scrutiny, the case is passed on to a larger group, known as the International Lords Medical Committee, which consists of 20 medical experts who meet annually to decide such matters, Specialists in the condition will follow up on the patients, pursuing further tests and reevaluating the results. They then present the case to their peers for a vote. On those rare occasions where the panel says that a cure is medically inexplicable, the Bishop of the Diocese of Tarbes then has the opportunity to make the public announcement that a new miracle at Lourdes has been identified. Over the years of the thousands of reports of cures that have been received and considered by the Office of Medical Observations, 70 of those have been determined to be without natural explanation. According to current medical standards, 
and are moved on to be formally declared miracles by the local bishop. The current director of the Lord's Medical Bureau is Dr. Alessandro de Francisis. One of the most significant cases was the healing of Marie Bailey. Her case was witnessed by Dr. Alexis Carroll, and it eventually brought about his conversion. In 1902, a physician friend of Dr. Carroll invited him to help take care of sick patients being transported on a train from Lyon to Lourdes. Carroll, at the time, was an agnostic who did not believe in miracles, but consented to help out not only because of his friendship, but also he had an interest in what natural causes might be allowing such quick healings as those taking place at Lourdes. On the train, he encountered Marie Bailey, who suffered from tuberculosis peritonitis. Her abdomen was considerably distended with a large hard mass. Carol believed that she would pass away quite quickly after arriving at Lourdes, if not before. Other physicians on the train agreed with his diagnosis. When the train arrived at Lourdes, Marie was taken to the grotto where three pitchers of water were poured over her distended abdomen. Her stomach began to flatten and her pulse returned to normal. Carol was standing behind Marie, along with other physicians, taking notes as the water poured over her abdomen, and he wrote, The enormously distended and very hard abdomen began to flatten within 30 minutes. It had completely disappeared. No discharge whatsoever was observed from the body. Marie then sat up in bed, had dinner without vomiting, and got out of bed on her own and dressed herself the next day. After that, Marie joined the Sisters of Charity to work with the sick and the poor and died in 1937 at the age of 58. Carol returned to Lourdes many times and on one occasion witnessed a second miracle, the instantaneous cure of an 18-month-old boy who was blind. Despite these two miracles, Carol could not bring himself to conclusively affirm the reality of miracles until 1942 when Carol announced that he believed in God, the immortality of the soul, and the teachings of the Catholic Church. Carol won the Nobel Prize for Medicine in 1912. On the 16th of April, 1962, Vittorio Michelli, a soldier in the Alpine Corps, was admitted into a hospital in Verona for the diagnosis and treatment of an obscure condition of his left hip. After various tests, ineffective treatment, and also a biopsy, the diagnosis of a malignant tumor, a sarcoma, was made on the 4th of June. Deterioration, both locally and generally, went on relentlessly with total destruction of his hip joint. But he still undertook a pilgrimage to Lourdes with his diocese in June 1963. During the pilgrimage, nothing notable happened. On his return, he appeared to be in better shape. More x-rays were taken there, and in a way difficult to comprehend, they were incorrectly interpreted, being considered identical to his former ones. This accounts for why it was six months after the pilgrimage before proper notice was taken of his excellent health. Absence of pain, the ability to walk, and finally the remarkable reconstruction of his hip, the first signs of which had already been present five months before. In 1967, the Medical Bureau said that it was impossible to give any medical explanation for this cure. In 1971, the International Medical Committee confirmed the verdict of the Medical Bureau in Lourdes, and in 1975, the cure was announced. Serge Perrin visited Lourdes on the 1st of May, 1970, due to a recurrent right hemoplegia with ocular lesions due to a bilateral corroded artery disorders, with symptoms which included headache, impaired speech and vision, and partial right-side paralysis, which began without warning in February 1964. During the next six years, he became a wheelchair user and nearly blind. While on pilgrimage to Lourdes in April 1970, he felt a sudden warmth from head to toe, his vision returned, and he was able to walk unaided. His cure was recognized on the 17th of June, 1978. Delizia Costa, who visited Lourdes on the 24th of December 1967 at the age of 12 due to a sarcoma of the right knee. She was offered amputation by her doctors, but her mother refused and took her to Lourdes instead. On returning to Italy, her tumor rapidly regressed until no remaining evidence existed. Her cure was recognized on the 28th of June 1989. She went on to become a nurse.
On February 11th, the feast day of Our Lady of Lourdes, Father John Hollowell, a priest of the Archdiocese of Indianapolis, who also had a substantial following on YouTube and Twitter, was diagnosed with brain cancer by doctors at the Mayo Clinic in Minnesota. About a month later, Father Hollowell returned to the Mayo Clinic for surgery, which was followed by two more operations as well as radiation and nine months of chemotherapy. By January 2022, scans showed the tumor was starting to regrow, joined by a second tumor in his pituitary gland. In June of 2022, Father Hollowell went to Lourdes. Two weeks after his return, with parishioners already telling him that he looked a lot healthier, an MRI showed Father Hollowell's brain tumor was gone. Issues from the growth of his pituitary gland stopped when he got back from Lourdes, he said. Now doctors have told Father Hollowell to report for MRIs every seven rather than three months, but he is not planning to submit his case to the Lord's medical officers for consideration. So why do these miracles prove Catholicism? Am I saying that God won't cure Protestants, Orthodox Christians, or even non-Christians? Of course not. But the Catholic Church is the only one who will go to these links, even seeking out agnostic and atheistic doctors to confirm there is no natural explanation before they will proclaim a miracle. As I said before, there have been 8,000 claims of miracles. Hundreds, if not thousands, of these claims you and I, using our own reasoning and judgment, would be convinced that the healings are supernatural, and they probably are. Yet the medical board has rejected them for various reasons. For instance, the case of Marie Bailey, discussed earlier, is not on the current list of recognized miracles. Even though the event happened in front of several doctors, one of which was an atheist who would go on to win the Nobel Prize and convert to Catholicism as a result of that healing. Other groups will claim miracles, but see no need to prove it. You just have to take their word for it. The fact that the Catholic Church allows such scrutiny and other groups do not says a lot. For instance, a prominent Assemblies of God church in my area recently claimed a woman's amputated toes grew back at a prayer meeting, but very publicly refused to offer proof, saying that we must take it on faith that they are telling the truth. Will you allow that to undergo the same scrutiny as the claims of Lords, and I'll give it the same consideration. The other reason it proves Catholicism is this. These miracles prove that the Virgin Mary appeared to Bernadette, something Protestants deny happens. I'm sure many Protestants will claim that this is all a trick of the devil. Well, I'm sorry, but the devil cannot heal. He can give an affliction and take it away, but that ability cannot account for all the cures. He cannot, for instance, reconstruct deteriorated bone. He cannot create. Also, when asked her name, Our Lady responded, I am the Immaculate Conception, confirming the Catholic dogma of the Immaculate Conception, a doctrine that both Protestants and Orthodox Christians deny. Until my next video, God bless.